trust the human beings and trust the young people. Let's take responsibility for today, but let's not take away all the solutions for tomorrow. It's great human beings make mistakes. It's great human beings learn from mistakes. It's great to die. <laughs> Okay, great. AI, yeah. Um, actually, I'm told that, does AI mean love? It, like, it's not, there's like a name, AI? It sort of sounds a bit like love? Yeah, AI, I, I hate the word AI called artificial intelligence. I call it Alibaba intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> might, might end up being true, you never know. Um, I, I think generally people um, underestimate the the capability, capability of AI. They sort of think like it's a smart human. Um, but it's, it's, it's really much, it's going to be much more than that. Um, it'll be much smarter than the smartest human. Yeah. I mean, it'll, be, it'll be like, you know, if, like, can a chimpanzee really understand humans? Not really, you know. They're just, we just seem like strange aliens. Um, well, they mostly just care about other chimpanzees, uh, and uh, this will be how it is, more or less, in a relative. Inter in fact, if it's if if the difference is only that small, that would be amazing. Probably, it's much much greater. I mean, I really think that there should be other companies like Neuralink, um, essentially to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain, because uh, the right right now we are already a cyborg. People don't realize we are already a cyborg because we are so well integrated with our phones and our computers, uh, the, the phone is almost like an extension of yourself. If you forget your phone, it's like a missing limb. Um, but the bandwidth, the, the communication bandwidth to the phone is very low, especially input. So, in fact, input bandwidth to computers has actually gone down because of typing with two thumbs as opposed to ten fingers. As a, big reduction in bandwidth. Um, input bandwidth has gone up because of video and, and imagery. So input bandwidth is many orders of magnitude greater than output bandwidth. But at a certain point, if we will just, even, even, assuming, assuming a benign scenario with AI, we will just be too slow. I think AI is going to open a new chapter of the society of the world that people try to understand ourselves better, rather than the outside world. And uh, it's so difficult to predict the future. 99.99% .99 of the predictions that human being had in history about the future, all wrong. Including that one? Oh yeah. <laughs> Only, you know, the 0.00% the <laughs> of the prediction are right. They're right because by accident. Yeah, but it's also true that 80% of statistics are false. Yeah. So, my meaning is cold that... room. Come on, guys. That was a joke. <laughs> but is, I'm happy about the artificial intelligence or Alibaba intelligence that's going to understand a human, the inside of the human better. So, when people worry a lot about artificial intelligence, people should have more confidence in themselves because... I think if a lot of solutions we don't have today, but there will be solutions tomorrow. We don't have solutions, but the young people will have solutions. So I'm quite optimistic, and uh, I don't think artificial intelligence is a threat. I don't think artificial intelligence is something terrible, but human beings are smart enough to learn that. And to me, artificial intelligence is just like, uh, people worry a lot about this today are those people, I call them, called, um, uh, called college smartness. People like us, street smart, we never scared of that. We, we think it's a great fun and we want to change ourselves to embrace it. I don't know, man, that's like famous last words. This is, let me tell you, AI, is, I mean, you look at sort of the, the rate of advancement, just in general, the rate of advancement of computers is insane. Um, and it, it, like a good example would be video games. 
you know, if, if you go back 40, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, maybe uh, you, had, you had Pong. That was just two rectangles and a square. Um, now you've got photorealistic real-time simulations with mil millions of people playing simultaneously. If you assume any rate of improvement at all, the, I mean, these games will be comp indistinguishable from reality. You will not be able to tell the difference. Either that or civilization will end. Those are the two options. Good. Yeah. Well, let's talk about something fun. I, I'm at the mind that you want to go on the Mars. Shall we go to the, the Mars? Yeah. Yeah, so what will the life look like on Mars? Are you both moving? What do you think about that? I, I, I actually, I'm not interested in Mars. I just came back from there, so. Uh -huh. I'm more interested on the Earth, the things, what's going on happening here. So what, what, why are you so curious about the Mars? Um, among the set of actions we can take that are likely to increase the scope and scale of consciousness such that we are better able to understand the nature of the universe, uh, one of those actions is to become a multi-planet species or ensure that life is multi-planetary. Not because I think something that, it's not, not from, from the standpoint of it just being an escape hatch or because I think that Earth is doomed, um, but there's a certain probability that is irreducible uh, that something may happen to Earth. Despite our best intentions, despite everything we try to do, the, the, there's a probability at a certain point that some either external uh, force or some internal unforced error uh, causes civilization to be destroyed um, or, 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 or sufficiently impaired such that it can no longer um, extend to another planet. This is the first time in the four and a half billion year history of Earth that it's been possible to extend life beyond Earth. Before this, it was not possible. How long will this window be open? It may be open for a long time or it may be open for a short time. I think we should, it, it would be wise to assume that it is open for a short time. And, and, and then let us uh, secure the future, secure the future of consciousness, such that life of, the light of consciousness is not extinguished. And we should do, try to do this as quickly as possible. That's my view. It's so difficult to secure the future of the Earth, but we can secure the future of next 100 years. I am not the person that I admire your courage for explore the Mars, but I admire a lot of people spend efforts on improving the Earth. It's, it's great to send 1 million people to the Mars, but we have to care about the 7.4 billion people on the Earth. How can we make the world more sustainable? And I'm not that fan of the Mars because I think it's easy to go to the Mars when you go on the top of the hills or of the, or the, or the building. Just one step, you go to Mars, but you will never be able to come back. Yeah, so that's, that's my that's view. That's how it works, though. And uh, <laughs> also, we cannot solve all the problems for future. But we have to be responsible for the future, but we should care more about how we can enjoy better. My view is that by the artificial intelligence or AI, when human beings understand ourselves better, then we can improve the world better. Last 200 years, human beings tried to understand the other side of the world better, understand the other people better. To be clear, I'm very pro-Earth. When I say, you know, us becoming a multi-planet species or making life multi, uh, ex extending life beyond Earth, um, ex ex expanding the scope and scale of consciousness, um, the, from a resource standpoint, I'm talking about less than 1% of Earth's resources should be dedicated to uh, making life multiplanetary or, co or making consciousness multiplanetary. So, uh, you know, I think it should be like somewhere in between uh, how much we spend on lipstick and how much we spend on healthcare. Like, uh, you know, things like for the preservation of consciousness, we should spend maybe slightly more than we spend on, on cosmetics. That's my, you know, and I'm pro cosmetics. I like it. They're great. But, but uh, you know, this is probably worth spending, I don't know, somewhere, like at least half a percent of. Earth's GDP on extending life to be multi-planetary. Maybe 1%, I'd say, seems like a good, a good use of resources. Uh, and, but then 19, you know, you have like two orders of magnitude more resources spent on Earth. So it's not like it's, uh, you know, somehow gonna fundamentally impair Earth. If, 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 if like I said, just 1% of Earth's resources on that order 
should be enough to make life multiplanetary. Seems like a wise investment for the future. So what new jobs will be created because of AI or has the change already started? What do you think? I think why we need that many jobs. <laughs> sure. Right? My view is that the jobs, actually every technology revolution people start to worry. Right? Last 200 years we worry about the new technology going to take away all the jobs. Actually, we made a lot of jobs. Second, because of the industrial revolution, job created a lot of jobs. What I think is the next 20, 30 years, human beings will live much longer. The life science technology is going to make people live probably 100, 120 years. That may not be a good thing because you get a grandfather's grandfather still working hard. But the challenge is, my question, why should we have a lot of jobs? I think people should work three days a week, four hours a day. And at that time, the jobs we need is make people happier, make people experience the life, enjoy the human beings. What knowledge or skills will be useful to master the future? Do you have any advice for young professionals who want to pursue a career in AI? Young professionals. I don't think we will, we will have professionals on AI in the future. Well, I worry a lot about, people worry about jobs, but I worry about education. All the education systems, the things we teach our kids, the way we teach our kids are mainly designed for the industrial period. And I'm sure the machine will be much cleverer than human beings in the future. How can human beings do better? Human beings should be smarter. Human beings should be wiser. So how can we be human beings to be wiser or smarter? I think that we should change the way of education. Change the things. Because in the, in the past, we focused a lot about, you know, remember things. Computer can remember better than you are. We want to calculate the faster, computer can, run, can calculate much faster. We want to run faster, computer can run much faster than you are. So human beings should have confidence by being more creative, more constructive. So how can we teach our kids to be more creative and constructive? And I think this is the key of the education. Uh, you know, I, I would say Try to learn as much as much as possible that allows you to predict the future or make the future. So the saying is the best way to predict the future is to make it. Um, just and, and then assess whether what you are learning is enabling you to predict the future with less error. Are you less wrong? We are always wrong to some degree. But can you reduce the error on your future predictions? I think that's the way to look at education. As we, of course, but it's both creative, create the future, and predict the future. So that includes art and all those other things. But close the loop on being less wrong about future. I think the best resources of the human beings on the, or, or the best resources on the earth are not the coal, not the oil, not the electricity, it's, it's the human brains. How can we make the human brains more creative, constructive? How can we make sure that the machines are always the toys and, and, and tools of humans rather than the control? So I never in my life and especially last two years when people talk about AI, say uh, human, human being will be controlled by machines, I never think about that. I think it's, 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 it's impossible, <laughs> right? It's impossible because human beings, they are different. Machines are invented by human beings. And according to the science, right, humans, can never create another animal that is smarter than humans. Especially when you have so many smart people, it's impossible to make another smart people. I, I very much disagree with that. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, but not, but the, I mean, the first thing we should assume is that we are very dumb um, and we can, de we can definitely make things smarter than ourselves. I mean, the, they didn't used to be humans, 
right? So the, uh, then the, our early civilization was very primitive. Um, we didn't have any technology really. We we're just like running around, you know, trying to not get eaten uh, or just trying to survive a winter. Now we have like heating and we grow food. This is all new stuff. So, you know, things have obviously gotten way more smarter than the past, way smarter. So that's going to continue. We are not the last step in evolution. So the most important thing, like I said, the most important mis mistake I see smart people making is assuming that they're smart. It's the not technology change the world. It's the dreams behind the technology that change the world. So my, my hope is that anything we can do is to improve this world, to help 7.4 billion people live better and live healthier. Trust the human beings and trust the young people. Let's take responsibility for today, but let's not take away all the solutions for tomorrow. It's great human beings make mistakes. It's great human beings learn from mistakes. It's great to die. <laughs> That's probably true. Thank you. Yeah, you cannot There's, live long. I just like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Fight for the light of consciousness. Thank you. Robert.